Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie at CameronMCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to talk to you about doing annotation-based validation of data in Strut. Say goodbye to that old validate method. Say hello to annotation-based validators. As you can see, my application here, which takes a first name, last name, email, and age, it does have a validate method, but I wanna get rid of this standard validate method because I wanna start doing validation by using some struts annotations. Now, as you can see, I take input here, I've got first name, last name, email, age, I can make that actually look a little bit better by clicking on the display properties properly. Um, I'd actually like to add two more fields here. I'd like to add a website and ask a person what their phone number is as well. So I'm gonna add a couple more fields here. I'm gonna add in as type string website and I'm also gonna add in of type string their phone number, a couple of extra things we'll wanna learn about the user. And as always, you want to or you want to add the getters and setters there, so we'll add getters and setters for phone. And since I've got that, I don't have those fields yet for the form, so I'm gonna open up the register form and add those fields in too. If we wanna do validation on them, we've gotta have input for them, and so that was website, and that was the phone number. Now also, person being dot website and phone we want to include those variables here in the register action properties it's just just kind of making sure that something prints out there something prints out there when we ask them for their information so what do you have website and phone Okay, and now when we rerun our register.html file, we should see that all of these fields do get populated. And there we go, that looks good. Display the properties properly, there we go. And your website and phone number. Now I did comment out the validation here. So you'll notice that if I click submit, well, it all goes right through. By the way, if I really wanted to be tight here, I would go in and delete the two string method and just recreate it again so that we include all of the new properties that were added. Anyway, it's just a little ism there. But yeah, as you can see, we're not doing any validation. It just goes right through as soon as we type anything in. So we can put as much junk in here as we want. In fact, if we do that with age, if we put a, something alpha, alphabetical for age, I think that might even cause an exception okay so it doesn't cause an exception but it does uh, does cause a bit of a problem so there we go we want to actually have proper validation in our example so what's the easiest way to do it well the easiest way is to go to your action class find the execute method and then just specify that there are going to be some validations going on here so I'll type validations in there and and you gotta open and close that bracket. So that's what I'm working out right here. And I'm gonna say that there's gonna be a couple of required strings. And so I'll say right off the bat, I'm gonna need a lot of room here that we're going to require the last name and first name. We are also gonna require that the email be validated. So I can paste that in as well. So you can see here, emails need to be validated. There we go, and line that up nicely. So we've got the email validator. Okay, that looks good. I think we've got a little bit of problem with organizing imports here. So I'm gonna do source organize imports, although this isn't gonna solve all of my errors, but it's gonna solve a few of them. I'm gonna say with the URL, I'm going to use a URL validator. So after this, I'll type in that URL validator. Do a little formatting just to make this look handsome. Okay, so we use the URL validator on the person's website. We got the email validator on the email. We can do a regex validator on the phone number. Make sure that the phone number is provided correctly. Now the regex is going to be a little bit more intense as you would imagine with doing a little bit of regex, but let's take a look at that. It's a simple validator, ask for a phone number, it's on the phone number field, and there's the regex expression there. I don't think it's too complicated, but basically it 
wants numbers between 0 and 9 and and I think what only includes dashes or brackets around it just a, a simple regex for the phone number and then finally we want to do a range for the int we want an int range validator need a comma in between each of these regexes but there you can see the int range fields added in there I'm going to do an organized import source Organize imports, click Control S and save. And so now with this execute method, I've specified all of the different requirements that I have for validation. I wanna make sure that the last name and first name are there. Uh, I want the email to use an email validator, the website to use the URL validator. I'm gonna use a little bit of regex on the phone number because phone numbers can get a little bit, uh, a little bit ornery there. And then finally, I want an int range field validator. And I've actually done something pretty cool here. Notice that I've said the minimum age is gonna be 18, and then I've used that variable. So if somebody actually changes the variable or something and we wanna print it out, it'll say must be over, and that'll always print whatever that minimum value is right there. So get, that gets the validator going. That now eliminates the need for that validate method. As you can see, the validate method is commented out. I'm going to click save. I'm going to close all other tabs there to clean things up a little bit. Clear that window, maybe even restart the server. Never a bad idea. Then I'm going to rerun the register page, say run on server. And I'll type in, well, I'll just click submit right away. What happens? See, it kills the name, doesn't like the first name, last name. If the website is malformed or the phone number is malformed, notice it says, hey, you must provide a valid phone number. And I don't know why the website isn't working. Let's go take a look at their register action here. URLs, personbean.website. It does look like it's using the URL validator. Let's give this a try. So Cameron McKenzie, me at me.com. Say I'm 19. And then your phone number. Click submit. And you know what? I, let's just take a look at, I think the reason why that register wasn't working there is it's personbean.website is the key value pair. And then if I go to the person class, it's private string website. And that's right, I never had the setters and getters for website there. So, okay, so I'll try that one more time. Everything looked like it was working except that one field. Let's run that on the server one more time. And let's see what happens if we don't put in a good website. Now we've got the enter a valid URL. So there you go. I just hadn't uh, made sure that I had all the setters and getters inside of my person class when I added that website field. And now it's actually put them in an ugly spot. So I'm going to clean that up too. But there you go. That's the idea. That's how easy it is to do validation if you start using uh, annotations, some of the built-in annotations that come with struts. And you can see them all right here, part of the XWork validator annotations framework. And there you go. That's all there is to doing annotation-based validation with struts. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there, and we've got a great set of tutorials on struts, spring, JSF, hibernate, you name it. Anything to do with enterprise software development, uh, we cover it over there. If you're interested in my personal annex, follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on YouTube.